Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Jedi Talk. I am your host, Brad Hughes. I am your co-host, Evan T. Boucher. And we are here with another episode. Uh, not too much news going on. A few things I'd like to bring up. Um, but uh, just going to be a fun little discussion episode, I think. Not as long as it normally is because I have to get going to Venice for the 4th of July weekend. By the way, happy 4th of July to everybody. Have a safe holiday, but not too safe. Make sure some of you guys blow your fingers off so then I can watch a YouTube video compilation and laugh hysterically like I just spent the last few minutes doing to the point where I had an asthma attack. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, be safe. I'm, just, I'm, I'm kidding, obviously. Be safe, be smart, um, eat a hamburger, eat a hot dog. If you're on a diet, live a little bit. Um, you've earned it. So we're going to have a good 4th of July weekend. What are you doing for, for the 4th? Probably nothing, to be nothing? honest. I mean, we're going probably Disney Springs maybe one night, but Sweet. probably okay. nothing. Playing cool. it super safe. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, Holly's family moved here. We're going to go help them move in, and hopefully most of that will be done by the time we get there just because they hired, they hired movers, so I'm hoping we don't have to do too, too much. But we're going to spend a few days on, at Venice Beach and uh, just kind of enjoy enjoy life. Um do you want to do news first, or do you want to do the kind of discussion stuff? I feel like we should do news first. Let's I knock out like, a little bit of news. I feel we like there's get that. not too, too much coming out. So only a few things I want to talk about here. Um, first off, oh, first off, I got to talk about this, because I and I have two comic books for you before you leave. Oh, please do. The Star Wars mainline comic books, I don't remember if I've talked about it on the show or not. Not much, if are any. Are incredible yeah. right now. Yeah. They take place right after Empire Strikes Back, and it's the best star wars comic books that i've read in a while they are so freaking good i highly 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 recommend you guys getting on this it is some of, seriously some of the best star wars comics i've ever read it, and you've read all of them it uh, at least them. Uh, yeah uh, most I've, of them i've read about 80 percent of them okay um these are fantastic i'm telling you man these these fit you know, you know, the thing we don't like about the comic books are is sometimes it just kind of goes off on its own tangent and it doesn't feel yeah. like part of Star Wars. Yeah. This is literally Luke Skywalker getting picked up from Cloud City and that whole ending and then him dealing with the repercussions of finding out that Vader's his dad. Mm, and okay. it's, it's in his head. Yeah. He's meant like, and then there's like this mission where they have to go back to Cloud City. It's freaking awesome and it feels like part of the movie. And that's nice. what I think Star Wars comics do the best at is yeah. taking what we already know and building upon it. Yeah, it's the Not, same with like novelizations. We get to see yeah. like what the character's thinking. You it don't feels get like that a, in the movie. It feels like so. a deleted scene. Yeah. Like it's it's so well done. So guys, go check out the Star Wars mainline comics. They're so freaking good. Speaking of books, there's a new Doctor Af I'm freezing. Are you cold? It's like yeah, it's a little I'm freezing cold. in here. A little chilly. Um there's a new Doctor Afra audiobook that has been announced i didn't know i don't think i remembered hearing about the book but the audiobook cast has been revealed and it looks like they're going to be doing like a straight up play now is would you say she's the most beloved character we haven't seen in any visual format except comics is she the most beloved character yes like, she has to be right i she's mean she's got to be because we eventually got thrown in rebels so mm -hmm. he's in a visual media so yeah yeah i think she, she is, is. she's a good character too i, yeah. li I like afra i don't love afra i don't i don't love them as some people do but they got a solid cast for this so emily Wu zeller will play afra which I, i'm excited to hear her voice you know what i mean yeah like what is she, what she sounds like mm -hmm. jonathan davis as boba fett now when i first read that i thought jonathan davis from corn but i remembered one of the one of the yeah, voice yeah. actors names is jonathan davis right sean patrick hopkins hopkins as luke skywalker um sean keenan i hope i said that right kenan as triple zero nicole lewis mm. as santa staros you ready for this one Carol Monda as Maz Kanata. Ooh, finally, some more Maz content. Yes. Thank uh, you. Ian, 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 E U A N, Ian Morton as the Emperor. Yes, very well. Uh, Catherine Tabor as Leia Organa, and Mark Thompson, of course, as Darth Vader. I think he does the best Darth Vader. Uh, I'm going to get this book. I, I'm, I'm super excited for this. It's called Dr. Afra, an audiobook original. Um, and it comes out in about a month from now. So get excited. I, I, I haven't really read a ton of the Dr. Afra comics. I have a like few first five or something. Um, and I just fell off because it was just something that like there was other stuff coming out that was getting me more excited about other Star Wars stuff. I didn't fall off because I didn't like it. I just got busy with other stuff. And um, I haven't started 
I'm two or I'm four chapters into the the book Queen's Shadow, which I don't think we talked about on the show. It's Queen's a prequel. Peril? Queen's Peril. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, Queen's yes. Peril. Okay. Um, it's a prequel to the to Shadow. To Shadow, which is yeah. weird. I don't know why they put them out that way. I wouldn't have expected that. It threw me off because I was like, wait, yeah. the election? And I was like, I had to look it up, and I was like, when does this take place? Like, is this a flashback? And no, it takes place before that, and it's it's kind of interesting. Um, but I'm gonna reread Alphabet Squadron. I got. Like 130 pages in Alphabet Squadron, and I gave up on it. I remember I was just like, it's not very good, but I found the all five TIE Fighter comics that I had bought, and I didn't realize I had all five of them. I thought I was missing one or two, so I didn't. I like I like completing the story. So if I'm reading Alphabet Squadron, I'm going to read the tie-in stuff before right. I do it. Yeah. So I wanted to get those before I really started reading Alphabet Squadron, but then I just started reading it, and then I was kind of lost. I feel like it was just a very different writing style that I'm used to. Um, but I'm going to give it another shot because the Shadows Fall book, Shadow Fall, Shadow Fall, Shadows Fall is a band, right? Yeah, Shadow yes. Fall is the name of the book. Um, <coughs> apparently, it's getting good reviews, so I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to. Mm-hmm. I've knock heard good it things out. too. I'm going to try to read some of it this weekend. Um, speaking of books that are fantastic, this has me very excited, Evan. This has me very excited. There is a new Star Wars book coming up. F- several books for the Mandalorian. It's gonna ha- it's gonna have a new novel, um, and as well as an art of book. Which I was saying when the show came out, I want an art of book. And what kind of I don't I want to say like concerned me, but like what did concern me a little bit was like the the gallery series on Disney Plus. Like how much of that would they show there and then limit themselves for a book? But now that we've seen all of the gallery, all eight episodes, they really didn't do any like art of in it. So no. that doesn't limit them for the book. We can they, get they a would ton show of like stuff. they would show like a few concept arts for character designs and that kind yeah. of stuff, but nothing that would ruin no like not no, nothing that you can look at and go well. There's all the content there. Yeah, um, it's a big book. It's it's a I think it's started it's like forty bucks, so it's more than the original art of books. I think yeah, but that's still not that bad. Well, no, I think I get mine from Amazon and they're like cheaper on Amazon. Well, Prime. That's the way to go. Could be that. Obviously. Could be that. But I'm excited for it, man. I I have all the the newer art of books. The art of books are my favorite. Like I love. Yeah, they're beautiful. I love just looking at all the concept yeah, art. Like I love the books, but I wish I could just get all of it on posters and just plaster my house with those. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Um, so the official Star Wars website has revealed the following titles, which will be released between this fall and spring 2021. So we got a lot of stuff gearing us up for season two. Smart move, I think, to do this. Art of Mandalorian yeah. season one by Phil Stozak, covered by Doug Chang. The Mandalorian original novel is going to be an adult novel published by Del Rey with writer Adam Christopher. I don't know too much about Adam Christopher, at least not from just the name. I have to look up and see what else he's done in Star Wars. I doubt they just hand him a novel. Um, the especially Mandal- a Mandalorian novel. Yeah, especially a Mandalorian. Uh, the Mandalorian, The Ultimate Visual Guide by Pablo Hidalgo. Hell yes. Mm. The Mandalorian, Allies and Enemies, a level two reader. Some of those level two books are fun, actually. Yeah. Um, the one about the resistance on that weird planet, that was a good little fun read. I read it in like three or two or three hours, and it was just a oh, fun wow. little story. Um, the Mandalorian 8 story book titled to be revealed later by Brooke Vital. Uh, and then the Mandalorian junior novelization by Joe Schreiber. Uh, so that's going to be fun. I, I'm, I'm excited about all that stuff. That yeah. is going to be good. Any kind of new, um, books we can get is exciting, but I feel like I'm, I'm behind now and I don't like being behind. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big deal for you. It, I hate it. I hate being behind. Um, you're all caught up on the gallery, right? Yep. Yeah. We watched the last one together. That's right. We did. Yeah, didn't that last part just blow your mind? Yeah. On about oh, no, you, no, no, we didn't watch it together. You told me about it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we watched Did a different one together. We watched six, maybe? We so watched one of we them together, one together, six or seven. But yeah, yeah, man. The last part blew my mind. The X-Wing. And it's not Disneyland's X-Wing. It's our yeah. X-Wing right here that, that I just have, goes like, to my pictures fa- in front of. That just goes to my thought that, that that was always intended to be a photo op. Yeah. The cockpit is obviously a real cockpit now that we've seen. Like, it's fully one, one you know, 360 degrees fledged out and yeah. built it's and awesome. there are steps that lead up to it I'm telling you i think they intended that to happen and it kind of just logis- logistically didn't work well, yeah out. it would be way too hard you'd have to get there'd be a line just for that i don't three hour I line for sure i just think for that i think like but think about the money you could make if you had, if you had to buy them to get yeah. it, like and just a picture of you and like a helmet yeah it wouldn't happen now though with the whole COVID <laughs> stuff but before this covid hit they would have made a killing on yeah, it alone would have been great probably just from me alone but all right that's all the news um what did you want to discuss here? Because that's, like I said, slower, slower news week than normal. Yeah, well. I also just want to say I'm not digging the Bounty Hunter comics. Yeah, I get that. Give, give me a story that isn't someone chase like Target Vader. I'm not interested. It's, yeah. You know he doesn't die. There's no. no stakes. Exactly. So I'm not a big fan of those. But 
but I'm telling you, man, do you, I have two issues of that I got for you. Sweet. That you can keep. They're yours. Um, well, of, thanks, dude. Of one and two. Keeping in touch, I feel like, with news that at least blew my mind about Galaxy's Edge. I recently learned who voices Lieutenant Beck. It's not going to be your first answer. I, I feel like I know who you're going to guess is your first answer, but it's not him. It's on um, his IMDb page. That's how I found out about ooh. it. So it blew my mind when I found out about it. I don't even know how I did. So, so who, who the voice actor somebody, is? Yeah, who voices Lieutenant That's Beck. That's Lieutenant Beck. Um, Sam Wilbur? No. Okay, I thought you were going to guess Mark Hamill. No, but I knew. But it's not Mark it and Mark. it's not Sam. You're on the right path, though. You're on the right track. Really? Yeah. I don't know who. It's actually James Arnold Taylor. No way. Yeah. Really? That blew my mind. And I was like, what? From Yeah, obviously Obi-Wan from Clone Wars, from Rebels. Like He's voiced Obi-Wan and played o- Obi-Wan more than anybody. So that's a crazy fact. But yeah, as soon as I found out that was Beck, I was like, renewed appreciation. That's Beck. awesome. Same with the X-Wing. Like, that's renewed so cool. appreciation. That doesn't sound like him at all. No. It's Yeah, he's crazy. Good. Meanwhile, back on Camino, Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's James Arnold Taylor. Yeah. Uh, that's inc- that's incredible. I had no idea that was that. That's awesome, man. Now I just want to go straight back and get on that right now. God, like, I miss it soon. so much. Just less than two weeks. I feel like I did it too right? many times in a row. Like, yeah. Because there was a few days there where we went every morning. Yeah, I've done it 16 times. That's a, I've done it 12. So Is that what I had done? I think you're at least 12. 12, yeah. 14, something like that. Yeah. I think it was 12. Yeah. But it's going to be awesome because it's... I guess in a good way, we've had like a four month break from it. I'm a, so. I was actually telling Holly that like, I'm actually kind of, th- not, I wish it hadn't happened this way. Obviously. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm excited that we had like a little bit of a break and it kind of, you're going to go back. We used to always, we used to always say to each other, we're not, you don't have to go right now. The parks, they're not going yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> we're going to be so refreshed so. from like a new, like once again, a new appreciation for it and we'll spend tons of time, but I, I on Galaxy's Edge, like always, but I'm actually going to Magic Kingdom first. But I don't know if we talked about it on the show. You're not a big Lego dude. I'm a huge Lego dude. Yeah. And in August, they're putting out the new um, Star Wars sets. And the one that got me the most excited, I showed you the ITS transport shuttle from Rise of the Resistance. They have a Lego set of. So That's I'm going to awesome. be snagging that. It's got Beck. It's got Vi Marathi. It's got the sp- uh, the spy droids, the R5 droids. And I think it's got like a... First order storm stormtrooper maybe I don't know but like I was more excited for Beck and Vi than I was anything else so I'm definitely grabbing that when that comes That's out pretty sick pretty soon Legos are not cheap my friend they're not cheap but <laughs> I'll be getting that one for sure <laughs> the, I don't, why are they so expensive I don't know it's just it's little just pieces plastic. of plastic that's all it is yeah I don't know I don't understand why they're so expensive because they mass produce them on assembly lines so it's not like there's limited quality or anything no idea. Yeah, I don't know. I've always wondered why Legos were so expensive. Like, I guess it's because they're so little, and you have to make Maybe. so many of them. Like the yeah. more, or or it's just one of those things where it's just they can and they do because that's probably, they can. Yeah, that's probably what it is because <laughs> it's just a massive assembly line that they yeah. just pump out all these little plastic pieces. And it's like, like I don't know. They're already making those colors because they make like every color of the rainbow. Like, yeah. Just, I mean, initially, I, I mean, I don't. It's know also the licensing. Like, you have to. It's not cheap to yeah. to get that Star that's Wars true. license. Yeah. But what is going to be cheap that I'm getting pretty soon, though, is the Squadrons game coming oh, out dude. in October. So excited. Yeah. Like, with each new trailer, each new, like, gameplay footage they put out, I get more excited. I'm not watching anything else. No? Nope. Man. I got, I got, I, I've I got the everything, gist. like, always. I, w- I watched the first one that was, like, the five minute long, but I was working yeah. while I was doing it, so I wasn't really paying attention. But I heard that yeah. you can upgrade things in your cockpit yeah. and uh-huh. customize your X-Wing and stuff. Yeah. Now, like, I'm excited for that, but how cool would it be if they had that? But they also had it in the sequel era. Would that be sweet? I feel like I would definitely play that. Probably more so than the original trilogy era of ships. Say that again? Would you... Okay, well, not would you rather. But wouldn't it be sweet if they had a sequel trilogy era ship battle, just like Squadrons? I mean, I feel like they could do that as like a downloadable content, like an upgrade or something. It's EA, so it might be a microtransaction well, there's not going to be any microtransactions in this game which yeah. is one of the reasons why I'm super excited about it so yeah. say the question one more time sorry I was, I'm, I'm multitasking and I'm bad at it if you could play <laughs> this exact style of game yes but also in the sequel trilogy oh 100% wouldn't that be badass yeah give yeah. me that I'd rather do that I think because I, I don't know I love the sequel trilogy ships more my only thing is now with the sequel trilogy it's complete and I don't really think you can go past it so yeah what battles would we really be playing in that's a good point it would be like you got Exegol. Yeah, that that would be sick. Yeah. Um, 
Exegol would be a good one. And I think maybe the evacuation of Dakar would be a fun one to play. That one would be fun. But also, I mean, in Force Awakens, you got the Battle of, well, it's Ilum, technically. But what's the name? What do they call it? Why am I going blank? Which planet? Starkiller Base. Starkiller Base. Yeah, that battle. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be, I don't know why I was going blank. But <laughs> uh, that battle would be sweet. That's how excited I was, I guess. It just killed me. But that, yeah, there's not that many, like, ship battles that we know of. And how about the Battle of the Two? That'd be awesome. You could definitely do that. Mm-hmm. That would be sweet. Or the the Jakku. You said ba- you said Batu. Did you mean Jakku? No, the Battle of the Two. Yeah, you could do Battle of the ja- Battle of Jakku too. I think that would be a good one. Yeah, which that would really be like original trilogy. Yeah, actually, I mean, you haven't watched anything it's on it, but do you want me to say something I know about it? What about the Battle of Jakku? Yeah. Yeah. Is there it from is, is it from the aftermath book? Well, there's that, but oh. in Squadrons, you do it's it is going to be around the Battle of Jakku part of it. Go for it. Say it again. Squadrons is going to involve the Battle of Batu or Jakku. Is it really? Yes. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So I get what I want. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get what you want. You exactly. get what I want. So, I mean, yeah, but aside from that, there's not a whole lot of battles you could do in the sequel trilogy. So that's a good point. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just kind of, I like the ship designs better, in my opinion, for some reason, in the sequel trilogy. And really, I've always liked TIE Fighters better than X-Wings. Really? Or not X-Wings. X-Wings are the best. I mean, TIE Fighter is better than any Rebellion or Resistance ship, except X-Wings. Really? Like A-Wings, Y-Wings. <laughs> I'm a B-Wing guy, bro. B-Wings don't do it for me. I think my second favorite, like, Republic or whatever ship is a U-Wing behind X-Wing. A U-Wing? Really? Yeah. I don't like the design of those at all. No? No. I like them like little drop ships. No. Yeah. I don't like them. Do you I, like I didn't the like the AT-ST or whatever either from Rogue One. The uh, AT-ACT, whatever it was called. Oh, wait. The the one with, like, the orange block on it. Do you remember that oh, one? Oh, the walker? Yeah, the yeah, one yeah. from Rogue One. I yeah, hate, I get I that, that, too. Yeah. They're, like, cargo transports. Yeah, they're weird. I don't like those either. Yeah. Cargo, yeah. yeah. A-T-A-C-T. Yeah. That's right. what the C-T is. Yeah, cargo, cargo transport. transport. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just rewatched Rogue One with you, most of it. Yeah. I stand it, by the good it. part. It's not a good, not a good movie. Just no, I agree. I've watched it now twice in the past week. Sorry. Because I included <laughs> it in my rewatch that I'm doing. But I was going to rewatch it today and then I just got super, super busy. And then, and then we did. And then we watched it when you got here. And yeah, I was watching Once Upon a Time in Hollywood this morning. So <laughs> just, just saying. Great movie. Um, but the good news is I'm finally past that, past the prequels, jumping into A New Hope sometime this week. Sweet. Then obviously you go from there. I can't. Nice. I just want to get back to the sequels. I love the sequels so much. They're so good, man. I just want. I love Kylo so much, so I haven't seen any Kylo content because I used to see him every day on Batu. Mm-hmm. Now I don't see him there. Obviously, I haven't watched a movie. Well, I, wa- I haven't watched a sequel trilogy movie for like two and a half months. It's wow, been a long really? Time. Yeah, I haven't watched anything since the last time we watched the little bit of Rise of Skywalker that we watched. Wow, it's been a, yeah, because a while I because I watched it. Like I get, I get obsessed with things. Like duh. Yeah. You know me. Yeah. And like, I, dude, I literally went through a phase where I watched The Last Jedi every night when it came out on Blu-ray. Man. To I the point where Holly was like, I'm going to the other room. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I love this it. movie. Yeah. And then I did, the, I watched Rise of Skywalker three or four times and I just, I don't want to get burned out on them. And I got real close, I think, with Rise of Skywalker to being like, okay. Yeah. I get it. Because I'd also, I would always get to the same point. I would always get like right to the Battle of Exegol and then I'll turn it off just because it get tired or whatever. Yeah. Um, Depends when you start it. It's a long movie. Yeah. So yeah. if you start it when it's like you're about to head to bed, makes sense. Makes sense to me for sure. <laughs> we also did the. Yeah, Duncan's been. <laughs> Duncan's dreaming. Crazy back there. Watching, watching Rogue One. He pushed play. We we did. We finished our Mando thing, right? The Hey Mando? Yeah, we're done. Yeah, we did that. We're done. Yeah. Then that kind of like, I was like thinking about the casting rumors we've heard. And watching Rogue One today sparked it, too. I thought, I feel like the casting rumors have been much better suited for what we could see in Cassian and maybe even Kenobi than, like, compared to um, Mandalorian Season 2. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, because, I mean, if you got, like, Hera Syndulla, she would make much more sense. Much more? I don't know if that's a correct phrase. She'd make more sense to be in Cassian than she would Kenobi or Mandalorian. You know, if you ask me, mm-hmm. I mean, I especially based on Rebels, because I'm watching most of Rebels now, finally, and I, it's to the point where I just want to binge it. It's so good now, because like we just watched Trials of the Dark Saber in season three. That's when Sabine like accepts her role in Mandalorian culture and like takes the Dark Saber. That ep- episode was crazy good. That's better than anything in all of Clone Wars. So now that I'm like finally seeing the really good parts of Rebels, I'm kind of getting more excited for 
names, um, possibly Cassian, if there's tie-ins like that. And I know you're not too excited for Cassian, but... No, because it's just like, again, it's it's the prequel thing. Whenever you yeah. know the outcome, there's no stakes. So, yeah. like, I'm not, I don't care. I just, uh, he's not that interesting of a character to me in the first place for the movie. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing about Rogue One other than K2SO that I find entertaining. It's boring for you like Krennic 85. Too, Krennic's, but Krennic's good, but, like, yeah. n- nothing really happens. The Death Star yeah. becomes operational, yeah. and, then, and then Tarkin takes credit, and then he goes to Vader to try to like backstab Tarkin. Like, yeah. and that's Vader's it. like best friends with Tarkin, so he's not gonna let that happen. So I thought he hated Tarkin. They did at first, but they ended up coming around and liking each other. A Tarkin book is good, by the way. Yeah, I don't remember. Like that's the problem with me about these books. I would do them all so quick, I can't really remember what happens in them. <laughs> but I really enjoyed the Tarkin book. I didn't at first. You like you remember it, but not in the way where you like you can tell somebody the whole plot. You can't yeah, sit I here and tell me the whole plot, no, but I you d- know what happens in it. Yeah. So yeah, I get that. I, I could read a thing. You go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I remember that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and you know it, so it's not like it's something that you just read and it's gone. It's yeah. just something that you don't, you're not able to just tell the whole plot of, which um, makes sense. Yeah, makes I don't care about sense. casting, but yeah, those those rumors make way more sense for that time frame. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what this is. Like I mean, even Ahsoka rumors. could be better suited for Cassian. I don't see why they would do her. Like they're going to have to make an old Ahsoka. Yeah. And an old Sabine and an old, I, th- I still stand by Sabine. If it is in Mando, it's going to be a flashback, especially after seeing her today in season three of rebels, the episode I just watched where she, she claims a dark saber. Like, I feel like we're going to see the flashback where Moff Gideon kills her and takes the dark saber. You think so? That's what you I don't think, think she's going to show up and try to take it from him after they no. find out that he but has it. How'd he get it though? He'd have to kill whoever had it to get it. And not if he stole it. Yeah, I mean, or I he guess. thought she was dead. Yeah, I don't know. I still think that's what's going to be. Or she faked her death to get away so she Maybe. could come back. That would fit her character because that's what she did to escape Mandalore. Yep. So. Mm. Maybe, but then, yeah, we'll see a flashback, and then she comes back as an old Sabine, so it's doable. I don't want her to die, but I think that is what makes the most sense and what's going to happen. I think you might be right. I mean, but it would it would offer some finality. Plus, she'd be older. Yeah. So it, would, it wouldn't be the worst thing. And it'll give Mando, like, maybe some more motivation. Maybe he's heard of her. He'd be like, oh, I've heard the legend of Sabine or whatever. I've heard my clan told me or something. So it might give him even more motivation. I don't know. Hmm. And Ahsoka makes more sense too. I feel like don't care about Ahsoka. helping out Cassian because she's helping out the rebels. That's the only book that I've bought that I haven't read is the Ahsoka novel. Wow. I mean, you have other things to read before you get to it, but you'll get to it eventually. Is that what's holding you back from it? You're too busy with it. Or no, with I just other stuff? I just not. I bought it because it's a Star Wars book, right. and I like the author. Yeah. Um, it's E.K. Johnson, I think, who did that one. Let me double check that before I give wrong credit. Um, but it just, she's not a character I love that much. No. And she, Ooh. she's fine. She's fine. E.K. Johnson. Yeah, I was right. Um, she's not in my top five, but I, I really like Ahsoka. I don't care. Yeah. I, I don't have, I don't dislike her. No, I'm yeah. just indifferent. I'm just mm-hmm. like, it doesn't resonate with me. And it's probably because she's the woman and I'm a cisgendered straight white male. Um, exactly. no, I just, I, I just, I just, I just don't, I'm just not compelled, but Whatever. Yeah, I get it. Totally get it. Watching all the um, Rebels episodes that she's in, though, they're all pretty good. I mean, I'm, it's it, spoilers for Rebels, but everyone's seen it except me. In season two, when sh- we think she dies, she doesn't die, obviously. Dave Filoni's yet said she didn't, but when she died there, Soka I was like... Soka lives, question mark? I remember yeah, all that crap. the shirt, and t-shirt he wore and whatnot. Like, that's when... It, Rebels really started to pick up. It picked up before that, but since then, I've just been, like, hooked on Rebels. I'll never so. forget John Campia ranting about how if Ahsoka kills Luke Skywalker, or no, Ahsoka, there was something about Ahsoka that was like if she killed a character, or, or I think it may be Kylo Ren. There's like a rumor that she was coming back for Rise of Skywalker or something, and he was like, if she kills him, then I'll uh, her his little fanboy creation. I was just like, all right, dude, that, <laughs> do you remember that that whole thing? I vaguely do. I don't remember why he was talking yeah. about it, but I was just like, yeah. I don't like Ahsoka, but like that's a dumb point. Yeah. And if it <laughs> also, guess what, bro? They're fictional characters. If it would have happened, in, <laughs> if it made sense in the story, it's fine. But like, yeah, who cares? I, I just want people to know I'm not shitting on Ahsoka because it's no. a girl. I yeah. just don't. I I don't know why I'm just like defending myself. You can't no. contact me anyway. It doesn't really matter, right? Uh, but it uh, it just doesn't. I'm just not into it. Yeah. And I like E.K. Johnson. I think she's a great writer. 
but I just don't care. It'd be, it'd be like if they made a Cassian book. I'd be like, okay. What if it was your actual who, – who is your favorite author? Is it – Claudia Gray, it's Claudia, 100%. What if Claudia did a Ahsoka or a Cassian? Like, and you, would you be excited to begin with or um, would you read it and be like – I mean, you'd be open-minded. I'm not I'm saying you're going to yeah, go in like, I, I screw would, this. I'd read it, but yeah. it, I wouldn't go, oh, because she's writing it now, I'm interested in the character. I yeah. just, okay. I just don't I get that. care that much. I mean, I'm, she's writing the higher, the higher Republic novel, and I just yeah. don't care. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. They, they Actually, that's part of news. Have you seen that? They leaked, not leaked, they intentionally put it out. They put out, I think, the first chapter. Yeah, I don't read those. No? Uh-uh. I didn't read it, but I've heard people talk about it. So Good. Yeah, I okay. like it. Yeah, I like it. I don't want to tell you what it is because you didn't read it. No, I so don't. you didn't read it for a reason. So I won't tell you, but but good. Yeah, it okay. intrigued me in what the whole like, what they call it, the big disaster, the great disaster, or something. That's the conflict. So I it, yeah, it, okay, that's good. So you, yeah, go in. Yeah, keep going in like you are because I'm very intrigued now, but I don't want to know anymore. I'm gonna wait till the books and then. Read Did you hear there. the whole, whole thing about Darth Bane not being canon anymore? Yeah. Okay. I'm convinced beyond convinced that it has to do with this novel coming out. Makes There's sense. no reason f- that they would do that without like, maybe he is one of like, I think personally that Bane's going to show up as a Jedi okay. and that he's going to turn, but he is Canon though. Cause the story of him is Canon, but the character traits are not oh, okay. necessarily. Okay. Canon. I was going to say, cause that there's parts of canon. him in clone wars when Yoda goes to Malachor. Yeah. So yeah. all the, all stuff that he's, so. he exists in already is Canon, but okay. the, the, the prehistory of that's so like gotcha. all that stuff is gotcha. not Canon. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like the story that he exists is canon, and the little bit you see yeah. of him and and the in it's kind of like Wars. what they did with like Han and Chewie, how they met in Solo. Like the exactly. legends are different, but it's like yes, inspired it by mm-hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, that is interesting, and I'm I'm convinced beyond convinced that he's going to show up in some way and be a major character that I think they're going to tie into a movie about Bane. Oh, that would be sick. I hope so. Or not, not Bane, Plagueis. I've been saying. Oh, Bane you said whole Plagueis. Time. Oh, meant, yeah. I meant well, that's what I was talking. Okay. Sorry, Plagueis? I meant Plagueis. I said I, I mean, said Bane twice. Yeah. I meant Plagueis. That whole thing I was just talking about, I meant Plagueis. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that negates what I said about Malachor. That is Bane. Yoda doesn't see Plagueis. He sees yeah, Bane. Pla- so yeah. so Plagueis, was, we only know of from... I, you said Bane. I was like, yes, that happened. And I'm like, yeah. why are you talking about Bane? Like, yeah. sorry. Gotcha. Brain fart. But I'm talking about gotcha. Plagueis. Well, Plagueis and that lies. makes sense because like, those, those are the two fan favorite Sith that people yeah. want films about. They mm-hmm. want Plagueis and Bane stories. So I'm, I'm all for it, dude. Like, yeah. And if that's how they're doing this, it, now if that's what they're doing with this, I'm all in. And yeah, I also maybe that see answers why it's so damn close to the prequels. Yeah. Because we've Could complained be. about why is it so close, but maybe that's maybe why. That's, maybe that's why. Yeah. Um, and also the uh, other Jedi that I want to learn more about is Sifo Like yes. I need him. Yes. I, that Jedi, I'm just like so fascinated by ever since yeah. I was a kid. Like I, I have always wanted to, to see Dooku, it. Kind of. Yeah, like, I, I want to know. What's going on with I want to know. I want to know yeah. all of it. I, I'm hoping that they explore some of that with this. I mean, he ordered the clones to be made, and the Jedi well, Council hints. didn't like it, so yeah. they like kicked him out. Kicked him out, and, and then like Dooku I, I was think, somehow involved with him. I and think then he turned to the to the dark side. Maybe because Dooku had him killed. So it's like, why did Dooku that? That's what Dooku says. But like in the same way that Anakin got killed by Darth Vader or like did he actually get killed? Did he turn into someone nah. else? They never did find his body. They found his lightsaber and his crashed ship, but they didn't find his body. Dooku had his ship shot down. That's all I'll say. Yeah. We don't know he if he's escaped. Dead. Yeah. I was really hoping in the Force Collector that that, would, that was going to be sifo that his grandfather that would have been, been Sifo-Dyas. Didn't even think about that. I was really hoping. I was like, come on, please. <laughs> sifo is Snoke. That's Ugh, what it is. I was really hoping that, too. sifo not yeah. Plagueis? Either one would have been Sif- cool. No, I was, I was hoping sifo was Snoke. Was Snoke. Either that would have been freaking sick. Yeah. Because then he would have had his own. Because like, you could have made it to where the Stormtroopers were still clones. And yeah. He, that's what he did with his clone army. took him yeah, off. and like, like that. Yeah. Okay, that's what we're going to do after Disney deletes the sequels. Oh, please. Let's so, talk about this. Yeah? This okay. friggin' nonsense. Yeah. Super nonsense. We were. I don't even know <laughs> where we found that. We were scrolling on Twitter or something, and then we clicked on this link. Oh yeah, it was like it was like one of those BS clickbait titles. It was like Disney deletes sequels or Disney cancels Star Wars or something. So we're like, I don't this? get how you can get away with that. No, like how how no. can you just literally be like cure for COVID? Like what if I what if right? I wrote an article <laughs> and I was like cure for COVID? Click and here. then in the article, it was just like wow, amazing miracle cure for COVID. Yeah, and then just and like then wash it clicks your on. Hands. It's like there's actually no cure for COVID. Like they yeah. there's literally articles that will say the headline yeah. and then negate the headline in the article. How the fuck is that legal? How is it legal? Yeah, it shouldn't be. That's what this article did. It said Disney deletes or whatever, and then in the article it's like, 
fans don't like these movies, so Disney should that's, delete them. But that's them. simply but like, not true. Yeah. That yeah. is simply not true. If fans yeah. didn't like the movies, they all wouldn't have been insanely successful. Exactly. The most hated entry of the franchise, I think, is still The Last Jedi. And it still made over yeah, a billion is. dollars. Yeah. So shut the fuck up. Yeah. That's not just the fan base seeing it once. Exactly. That means people saw it again and liked it and saw it again. Yeah. I don't think the same thing happened with Rise of Skywalker. They didn't, it didn't make a no. billion dollars. No. How much, how much did well, it make? I have no idea. It didn't idea. make as much as Last Jedi, but it made a billion. I don't think so. No? I don't, I don't think know so. either, obviously. So I, I, I don't, don't know. Look so, up. So, so I'm, I'm going to say I'm less than yet, Last so, Jedi. Uh, okay, so how much? I, it definitely made less than Last Jedi. But how much do you think? I'm going to say $850 million. I have no clue. I'd say just right around a billion, give or take. I'd say eight fifty. so give me a number. I'd say nine fifty. Nine fifty. Let's see. Oh, shit. It did hit a billion. It did? Okay. So but all it, three of but no movies one likes it. But it combined sucked. have made four billion dollars. <laughs> Just three movies. No, that's worldwide, I would assume, right? It's yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, that's worldwide. That doesn't take anything away from it. It's, like got, it's, still it's got a fifty-one on Rotten Tomatoes, dude. What uh, in the fuck are you talking about? Hey, people will come around so, on it, like they did the prequels. Hang on, they'll come around. Hang on, what, let's play a game. What yeah. do you think has a lower Rotten Tomatoes score? We'll go by audience score. We've done this. Rise of Skywalker or Attack of the Clones? Oh, no, we haven't done this. Okay, we compared the sequels. Rotten Tomatoes score, not audience? Audience score. Whatever, so whatever the... Whatever the audience. Audience score. score. Hang on. Let me click on... and We'll, 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 get, a, we'll get an official way to do this real quick. Hang okay. on. Hang okay. on. Hang on. So we can go by a tomato meter. Or, oh, or the audience score. So the audience score for Rise of Skywalker is 86%. That's about right. That's yeah. about right. I would say yeah. probably ninety three for me. It's a, but that's a that's way different than fifty one. That so movie is definitely do, made to please just like general public. And like I like it, you but like there's it. There's nothing but it's wrong made, with that. No, but it's also made that way. We both like it. and We're not the general public. Yeah, but, for sure. But it I, also did please the general public. But that's fine. Yeah, you you're, you make movies for the general public. Yeah. If if it was just Star Wars nerdiness the entire time with references, a would get fucking exhausting. Yeah. And not B, even we would. No like one it. would know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. So you have to kind of, and Balance I'm not saying it dumb it down, but like you have to make it a, 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 a thing that can be enjoyed by hardcore fans, which we're, I mean, this is, we're doing a fucking Star Wars podcast. So I'd yeah. say we're pretty hardcore. Yeah. I'm wearing the Who hat right it? now too. Like, Loved it. I yeah. actually would say probably 92, 93 for me for Rise of Skywalker. Okay. Yeah. And 98 for uh, I'd give it like Last 90. Jedi, 98, 99. Yeah. I'd say probably, I'd say probably 98, 98. We'll be 98 for Last Jedi because 2% yeah. is Canto Bite. Fuck that. I hate yeah, it. I'd give it 97, 98. Yeah, somewhere and then there. Force Awakens, I'd say probably 90. I'd give it like a 94, 95 max. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like it better than than Force Awakens um, personally. So let's go by audience score. Or do you want to go by tomato meter? Just do both. Just okay. do both. I'm going to screenshot time. this one so we know what they were. So I have to go back. This is episode nine versus episode so two. Episode nine, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, 51% on, on the tomato meter, and then 86% with audience score. Okay. Um, let's see <laughs> what Attack of the Clones Attack is. of the Clones is going to be 29% tomato meter. That's my guess. Okay. I'm going to say tomato meter is 40. Okay. And then I haven't, I haven't looked yet. Yeah. And then audience score is going to be around 85. 85. I was going to yep. say like 70. So I'm saying 70 for audience, 29 tomato. I said 50. You said 40. 40. So 40. 40 audience. 70. 70 tomato? Yes. Okay. That's for episode two. <laughs> you got to be fucking kidding me. The tomato meter, certified fresh at 65%. Audience score, 56%. Yo, go fuck yourself if you think Attack of the Clones is a better movie than Rise of Skywalker. Read that off one more fuck time. I'm off. Writing, I'm writing these down. What do you say? 65% for the tomato meter. 56% audience score. Dude, what the fuck are you talking about? The critics the critics said Attack of the Clones is better than Rise of Skywalker. Yikes. The acting alone in that movie and the dialogue should automatically put it at starting at 50%. It's a fucking disaster. Yeah. Wow. I had no faith in this beforehand. Not this like our game here, but like the tomato thing and the audience thing, but now I what really don't. What the shit are I have, you I have talking no about? You, I, I don't even think, like, if, for, if someone can seriously sit here and tell either one of us 
with a straight face and give me reasons why Attack of the Clones is better than Rise of Skywalker, I would be very interested. Hit Evan up on Twitter if you actually think Please, yeah, that curious. Attack of the Clones. I gotta know why. I'm not gonna argue with you, but I'm very curious as to know why you would think that's the way it is. Yeah. I cannot fathom that. It's way worse than I thought it was gonna be. Oh my god, that's so stupid. But yeah, they're not gonna cancel and redo these movies. Not a chance. Not a chance. Yeah, there's no way. No chance. I mean, They're not going to do it. For, I mean, a, for a ton of reasons, but they've also built two theme park lands around it. Yeah. Soon to be three with one in France. I don't, what are they, so have like, they said what they're doing with that yet? The one in France? The concept art showed only the Millennium Falcon That's what ride. what it's just going to be. What a bummer. Yeah. It's basically, it's just if you like cut like off Galaxy's the... Galaxy's Edge light. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> well, it's, the it's what we had for how many months before it opened? Oh, really? So just like the bizarre and the, are they... Yeah. Why, it's, why it'll be you, everything except like Resistance Forest. They're just did, cutting that off. Why would you give them Rise? Why would you give them Millennium Falcon? It's cheaper. If you're try, uh, just, and you're trying to re- revitalize a park. That will, because <laughs> that's the worst park on the planet. So if you just give it one Star Wars ride, it's going to make it better. They're also doing more in it. They're doing Avengers and Frozen. They're adding more. Yeah, the Frozen stuff looks sick. Yeah. I, I think the focus is more on Avengers and Frozen than it is Star Wars in France. Makes sense. Those movies don't do Star Wars is more of an American thing, I think, because they don't do super hot in China. Yeah, definitely. But I also think they don't have the exposure, and I don't think the the story translates language to language as easy as like something like Avengers does. Yeah. Um, because there's like made up jargon. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the Lots force could jargon. be something different to them. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, yeah. Um. Yeah, they're not remaking them. <laughs> no, there's no way. It's not no happening. way at all. They're not happening. Do you want to play a ro- the Rotten Tomatoes game? Let's keep doing it because that was okay. crazy to me. That makes no sense to me. It makes right. no sense to you. Like I don't so understand. So we have we have audience score and the tomato meter. Pick a Star Wars movie and we'll go, and we'll give our answers and then we'll look it up. So pick a pick a movie. I think mm, the best example of something like this might be no coin. Well, it is a coincidence. Rogue One. I think I think Solo. I think Rogue One is going to have like a huge audience score, but a low critic score. See, I think I think they're going to be pretty even. You think they'll both think be even on Rogue One? I feel like I remember people being like, critics were like, this is such a, this is a really good Star Wars movie. Okay. And I remember audiences really liking it. So I'm going to say Rogue One has a tomato meter from the critics of 86% and an audience score of 90 it up i'm gonna go tomato of 70 and audience i'll say 92 i agree 90 is probably there what they said let's see here god four years ago oh shit dude okay what you got tomato meter 84 audience score 86 i told you they'd be close wow i told you they'd you be nailed close. it and you said 86 for tomato and it was 84 and yep. you said 90 for audience and mm-hmm. it was 86 but you nailed it though so so let's mark it down who lowest score wins so actual Man. was 84 and 86 so that's a difference of two and four so a total of six so my score is six right now so lowest score wins okay how make, far off makes sense? the guesses were yeah it's like golf so you i'm wanna, basically you already in a score. hole that's like unsurmountable at this point well i could fuck this next one up you right, could. <laughs> do you want to count um attack of the clones also no we'll, we'll do the ones we that we haven't done yet because i because this is now the game <laughs> this is now the game okay Probably i said score. damn i was way off i said 70 and it was really 84 and then i said 90 and it was really 86 so that gives me 18 okay so 18 to 6 I'm going to move this over here. Six. 18. This is impromptu, so yeah. bear with us. Um, okay. What movie do you want to do next? Let's go solo, because you just solo? said solo. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm, I haven't clicked enter yet. Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm going to say... Do you want to guess without? Do you want to write your answers down before we talk about it, or do you want to talk about it and then write your answers down? I, th- I think we should do you answer first and then we talk about why we gave it the score we gave it. 
So I'm going to say this okay. one is. I'm hmm. going to say the tomato. This one. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what to do on this one. Yeah, it's Because it's weird because like people that didn't see it in theaters that have since watched it. And it does say, it, it. it is all time, by the way. You could Okay, you so could you can go in and edit it right now. Yep. It, well, not and you, but it, it is, yeah. Or bump it down. Yeah. But with that taken into account, I think audiences love it, especially now. Like, people tweet all the time, hashtag make solo to happen. Like, mm-hmm. it's a big, real thing. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a higher audience than tomato. I'm going to say 83 audience, 73 tomato. That's odd, because I have 73 tomato as well. An audience score eighty one. So we could tie it up here. This like is, okay, could, this is could, big. You could make up some ground. Okay. Okay. So I'll start with story rotten tomatoes. The tomato meter is a seventy. Seventy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're both three off. Yeah, both three off, so mark that down. So I have a total of nine right now. That gives me 21. 9 to 21. And the audience score is 63%. What? So I was yeah. 20 off. You were 81 is what I had. Were, yeah. So how, how many did I, how much was I off? I said 83. So I was 20 off. So, so I was, tw- I was 12, 19 yeah. off. Mm-hmm. So 19 plus 9 is 28. 20. <laughs> Both and of us so are right now. We're I had both 20 struggling. to your score, right? Yes. So you have 41. Dang. 28 to 41. Sweet. This is actually pretty easy to keep track. Um, okay. What movie do you want to do next? We've got, we've done a prequel. We've done the two in kind of no man's land. I don't know how you want to call it. Let's do one original and one sequel. Okay. I was going to say do... The sequels, okay, because I I don't I actually don't know where Force Awakens stands, so that's yeah. Let's so you pick the original, the original one. I'm gonna go. I think uh, let's do Return of the Jedi. Okay, it's probably the least beloved. It probably is, yeah. Even though it's, I think both of our. What's your favorite? It's my second favorite of the originals. So yeah, okay. Um, okay, I will write my answer down here. Okay, I think I, I'm pretty confident in mine. Pretty confident in mine. Okay, it's all time. What'd keeping, you give it and why? Keeping that in mind. Tomato and audience. I'm going to say they're both pretty high. Like K2SO, you know what he it's says. It's high. It's high. <laughs> Very high. I'm going to say tomato, 84. You know what? I'm going to keep it the same. Audience is also 84. Okay. Um, I gave it a 90 and a 93. I think tomato meter, I think it's the only problem you might have with this one being a higher audience or a tomato meter score is because it follows Empire Strikes Back. And that's, that's the one that everyone loves. That's true. Um, but I gave it a 90 with an audience score of 93. I think there's enough people like me who really love the movie that will yeah. bump it up a little bit. All right. Yeah. Let's see here. <sighs> tomato meter. Drum roll. 82. Ooh, so I was two off. And you were... Adolf. 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 Whoa. <laughs> Hitler. Is that so you? Thirty-six now, and you were how many off? It was eighty. You said no. Oh, Eighty-two. Eighty-two. I got. I was two off. So you're. I said eighty-four. Three. But you're, we're getting close here. All right. Mm-hmm. And I only have one more movie though to make it up. And I was one off with an audience score of ninety-four. I said ninety-three. Oh, I said eighty-four. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you got this in the so bag. Fifty-three. But if I could really mess up. The sequels. So, what sequel do you want to do? We know Rise of Skywalker already. Yeah, we, pro- we probably should just go Force Awakens. We should, because we've definitely done Audience and Tomato. I think I in like two or three episodes ago. I don't know either, but it was like maybe three or four episodes. I don't know ago from at least Last Jedi and Episode Nine. So yeah, let's do Force Awakens. Okay. Andy frantically clacking on my keyboard. Hmm. See, the audience thing I don't know because I feel like people could have gone back and shit on it. I don't think anybody does, though. 
I mean, comparatively so. People do. <laughs> but I don't think they do as much as Last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker. All I've, right. I've got mine set. What do you got? I've got a tomato meter of 82. Okay. Because I, th- I think it's a little low, honestly. Um, but I think because it was so much of the original in yeah. that movie that yeah. it uh, – it may have tainted critics who have been for like, you know, I feel like I I've get seen that. this before. Yeah. And I'm doing an audience score of 84 because I feel like mm, okay. people, people loved it and then they hated on it for a little bit. Gotcha. So that's kind of my thought there. I go 88 tomato and 90 for audience. Okay. So we're both pretty close. You're, pretty close. Yeah. You're a little lower on tomato, but I get it. Wow. Good logic. I was off on this, man. Dang. So that um, means I was too. Tomato meter, 93. Ooh, I was five off. So I'm 11 off on that one. Mm, okay. Makes it interesting. 37 plus... Nine, you said? 11. Oh, 11? 11 off. Yeah, yeah, because 82. 82. Yep, so 11. So it's 11, so that would be... 37 you had, 48. so 48. Mm. Breaking Jeez. out the fingers and toes for this. We're counting on everything. 48. What did you have? 53 plus what? I had 88, so five. So you're up to 58. Mm, so I'm only 10 off. Only 10 <sighs> off. I don't, I don't see this going my way for audience. Audience score, what did you have? 90. I had 84. Yes. The actual audience score was 86. Ah, right in the middle. So 50. But dang. Me. And that gives me another four. So that gives me 59? No, you have 58 right now. Oh, okay, so we have 64. 62? Yeah. 62 to 50. I dang, won. I, okay, I made a comeback, but yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. you did make a comeback. Yeah, so I, I won that one. That's a fun what game. What was the actual like audience score this. again? Audience score was 86. 86. Um, that was nice. 234,350 like <laughs> reviews. Wow. Uh, I think that's an appropriate score for that movie. Yeah, I, I think definitely. It, I think it is. Um, yeah. That's like the only one they've gotten right. Is, is pretty close. And I'm curious what Last Jedi is now. They got episode six right, too. Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. I agree with those. I think everything else is kind of skewed, but I don't know. I've never really lived or, or died by Rotten Tomatoes, so... Um, Last Jedi's tomato meter is 90. Good. Okay. And audience score 43 with 219,530 reviews. Uh, Somebody flag that though. Go back and look at it in 10 years. Oh yeah, I know. Right. Seriously do. Cause it won't be 43. I'll guarantee that. If (laughs) freaking, if Attack of the Clones has a higher rating than the Last Jedi audience score wise. Yeah. Attack of the Clones was 70. It was 70 to 43 then. Go back in 10 years. I guarantee it's not going to be that. There's no Go way. Go back in three years. I mean, people are yeah. already starting to be like, I, I thought it was hilarious when people who hated The Last Jedi were like, they just ne- they negated all of The Last Jedi. It's like, if you hate it, wouldn't that make you happy? Yeah. I mean, technically, <laughs> by their logic, their lack of logic. So stupid. I don't, I don't get it. Insanely dumb. I don't get it. Ugh. People. All right. It's the climate that was a fun we live game. in. Man. Yeah, I, I like that do, a lot. I would like to do a lower level podcast where we just play that game for a With little bit. With just random ass movies. Just random movies. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Let's do let's do a random movie right now. Pick okay. a movie. Just a random. Well, I won't do it because I don't remember the number, but I remember being shocked how low it was. But Hook, look up how low Hook Ugh, is. I don't like that movie. You don't? No. It's not this is movie. what turned me off on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. I can't do it. I'm not a big fan of that movie. Oh, Hook is the goat, man. Okay, so not really. A, but holy it's good. crap! A oh, tomato meter of 28. Come on now. Hook An is no 28. Score, it's about that. And no. Audience no score 76. That's way too high. No, it's in the middle. Okay, let's, let's pick another. Okay. Let's pick another movie. You p- no, you pick one. Me? Well, you've seen m- way more movies than me, so I, don't, I mean, I know the score. No, but um, I d- I'll be like, I don't know it. I don't. Let's know Let's pick it. a Disney movie just to stay, because I feel like those animated okay. movies are gonna be tough to figure out. Yeah. Um, no. Okay. I'm probably gonna get some heat for this, but like, we just watched Cinderella like two weeks ago. Boring. For the first time, I have in like 15 years. Super boring movie. Yeah. What the hell? I was like, what are we looking at right now? I rewatched was, Princess and the Frog the other night, and I remember, uh, how, I remember how much I love that movie. No, it's good. That and movie's great. We can. I don't know if you wanted to talk about Splash. But we yeah. can talk about Splash a little. I just, bit. I just did. A, I just did a podcast with my friend Molly, and we talked yeah. about it for like forty minutes. I'm, nice. I'm down well, to talk about it. We can probably do forty, but let's get do one movie here, and then we'll go Splash. Um, you want to do a Disney movie? So let's do. Yeah, because that guarantees I've seen it. So <laughs> you know what? Let's say topic. Let's do Princess and the Frog. Princess and the Frog. That audience is going to be high. I don't think so. No. Mm. Mm. I've never met a person that tells me they don't like it. I have met people who don't like it. Really? Think it's think it's uh, boring. No, no way. Right, Definitely not, not boring. Not looking at what it is. Okay, Let's put this in front of it. 
So I'm going to say the critics scored it really highly, and I'm going to say probably mostly uh, of that reason is because it's the first black Disney princess, and they wanted and to. Only. And only. And only for now. Um, okay, here's the thing. I'm saying that, but I'm not saying it that they did it in a racist way. No, I'm saying they didn't make they, it because they she's scored a black it princess. because they wanted people to go out and see it. Yeah, um, so they could be represented. I don't. I don't mean that in a in a pandering like, oh, they did it. They still liked it because she's black. No, I'm not saying no. that. I'm saying they probably graded it a little higher than they would have if it was not the first of its kind of a movie. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, I get it. Yeah, and I, again, let me be very clear. Prince and the Frog is my Probably second favorite Disney movie of all time. I hmm. freaking love this movie. I love it too. It, I love not this that movie. much, but I do love it. I love it. It is, is my is my favorite Disney movie for sure. The last twenty five years. Whoa, one hundred percent. Wow. To be fair though, there's been a lot of shit in the last twenty five years. There has been. <laughs> <laughs> not counting um, the Disney decade, the Renaissance. So that, I'm gonna yeah. say, Tomato Meter ninety three. Whoa. Okay. And I'm gonna say audience score eighty nine. Okay. I was gonna say eighty eight tomato. And 85 audience. Five. All right. Oh, see, I knew I knew the audience score wasn't that high. Really? Tomato meter, 85%. Oh, I said 88. Okay. I said 93, so you won that one. Yeah. Um, and here's the one where it's tricky. You won both because... The audience score, 74%. I said 85, so I was still way off. You were still way off. But you, Dang, you you audiences, what are we doing? Uh, this is what I always say, man. People Dig are dumb. a little deeper. People are dumb. Almost they don't get it. there. Like, they're so, like, so the music songs. alone is great. Oh, so good. The animation is beautiful. The the other side animation is some of the best oh, Disney yeah, animation Yeah, I didn't time. even say his song, Friends on the Other Side. I can change He's a great villain. Some too. He's a top five Disney villain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, top three Disney villain. I would say. Yeah. Like, for think me, about it goes that, man. Scar. Scar's great. He's my number one. I still um, love Hades, even though James Woods is kind of a piece of crap. But is he? Yeah. What is, what's, what's he doing? Eh, just Why the general, just normal Hollywood piece just of crap stuff. Yeah. Oh. Well. It is what it is. He played the devil, so to be fair. Yeah. He yeah. wasn't pretending to be not an no. asshole. That's funny. It's what we were talking about <laughs> the other day. I was like, we were talking about how, like, how good Bugs Life is and how it's kind of underrated. But I was like, yeah. Hopper's Who said that? I was saying that. I to who? What, me? And, no, yeah, it was me and Erica. Oh, oh, oh. I think it's underrated. She, yeah, it's underrated. I don't like it. It's, no? It's fine. I liked it a lot as a kid. I, yeah. I, we watched it as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. Recently? Eh. Four years ago? Three I years say ago? I say rewatch it. Okay. A I little, little boring. Yeah. But that's what we were saying. We're like, Hopper's a great villain. I was like, yeah, he's Kevin Spacey. And she's like, oh, yeah. And then yeah. I was like, villains in real life end up playing villains in movies, I guess, because Kevin Anakin Spacey. Anakin Skywalker. Uh, for, uh, yeah. Jake Lloyd, he right, <laughs> a meth head. So, yeah, it doesn't always happen that way. But I'm like, dang, Kevin Spacey, like James Woods, yeah. uh, yikes. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Wrap oh, Splash up, Mountain. Wrap it up with Splash. Splash Mountain. Dang. All right, man. So what do you think? Okay, I've, I've said it a lot. After talking about Princess and the Frog a little bit there, like I got the first outlet I found out about it from was Blog Mickey. Mm-hmm. And they have they ever been wrong? No, Mike's always right. Yeah, and I got that. And okay, Mike, hear me I, out. I am convinced Mike knows is like buddies with Chapek or Iger or somebody, <laughs> like, or Scott Trober, somebody. But so hear me out, not you specifically, but like people listening in general. Hear me out. I got the blog Mickey notification, and I go, I hope they're finally wrong. That th- th- that makes me sound terrible, but like hear me out. So I say, no, no, I, okay, here's the thing. It doesn't make you sound terrible because okay, I'm, like, I'm conflicted as well. Yeah, I'm like, please be wrong for the first time, like please. And so, like, and then Disney pushed it out. Yeah, and then what? I saw it official, and I was like, okay. And then another layer on it, I didn't know it was Walt Disney World too. I thought it was just Disneyland. No, it makes no sense at Disney World. Yeah, and that's that was what I my, said. my big part of I'm my like, conversation with Molly was that it makes yeah, no sense here. I was at first, I was like, okay, it sucks that we're losing the original one in Disneyland, the history. But then I'm like, at least we still have it here. And then I found out ours is changing too, and I'm like, possibly Japan as well. Yeah, they were the last one to say it. Yeah, are they? Confer- did they confirm it? No, they're still thinking. I hope not. Yeah, but that was my first thing too. I'm like, it's between Big Thunder Mountain and Frontierland, so like, how do you make that work? You don't. I told a like, story on my podcast that I had never told anybody because I think I may have told Holly, but I, I was working at Disney at the time, and I was when I was it was when I was on the Get team, and there was an Imagineer that came out. And he had on a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Project lead hat. 
and I he walked by me. I was like, hey, man, I love your hat. And he goes, oh, thanks, man. I go, so is Galaxy's Edge as cool as I'm hoping it's going to be? And he goes, he goes, yeah, it is. And he was taking, he was talking to me while he was taking photos of Pecos Bill. Hmm. And Tiana's place? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're going to get okay. a mini land of like New Orleans type. But it's still in the middle of frontier land, though. It's not it? in the middle, though. If you think about the layout, they could turn that whole area from Pirates up to Splash Mountain and that first bridge, yeah. its own little New Orleans Yeah, that's circle. where the parade <laughs> has its exit, right? That's where yeah, it comes out. That's where out. it starts, yeah. Yeah, it starts there. And so, 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 anyway, so I was, I go, he, he goes, yeah, and he goes, you worked on Rise of the Resistance. And I was like, oh, that ride, I'm so excited for it. He goes, you just going to blow your mind, blah, blah, blah. And I mm-hmm. go, so what are you working on here with, at Pecos Bill? And he goes, I can't really say. But this was two years ago. Yeah, so I, I believe that. People are saying there's no way they've planned this out. Oh, there's no way they did. Okay, hang that's on. That's what I'm saying. Like, how I, did they put it out in no, no, two no. hours? Like, no, 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 no. They, like, they don't. Here's the thing. Yeah. I've worked for Disney. I know how yeah. it takes years yeah. I've to never do worked anything. for Disney, but I still know how well, things work. Well, just think work. about a project like, that big. Yeah. Uh, not, a movie not, takes years. Th- th- they were saying that, like, I would say on my other podcast, it was like they just happened to get the right ride with the right movie. That's true. That's all that happened That's with that petition. Yeah. That's all that happened with that petition, yeah. for sure. You don't retheme a major attraction in both of your flagship theme parks yeah. in the U.S. on a whim. A 30-year-old attraction, too. On a whim we're that not, is beloved. Yeah, we're not talking about like Buzz Lightyear, Space yeah. Rangers, Spin. Well, hey, hey, come on. I'd rather, I love I, it, but... I love it, too. They, it's not the same. No, Splash it's, it's Buzz, definitely not the not same. The same. Um, there's no way, no way, that this, this is because of that petition. No, not at all. Zero. The, yeah, it's not the fact possible. that they brought Tony Baxter back should tell Baxter's you that this involved, isn't, this isn't just a, Carter's involved. Yeah, she's a genius. Yeah, she's amazing. So like I, I'm with you, man. I, I love Splash Mountain. So if you if you take out yeah. Haunted Mansion and move it to the side because there's nothing that's ever going to top that. Not even Rise of the Resistance. I oh, still man. I still no. like Haunted Mansion more. Dang. Okay. It's just nostalgia. It's built in. I'm never going to not love yeah. it. For me, it's Rise Pirates Mansion. So I'm somewhat with you, yeah. but I get it. So I, I always have to like take my favorite. Like I do this with bands too. I take my favorite, my very my goat. And yeah. I move it to the side. Like so yeah. for me it's Led Zeppelin. Okay, yeah. So if you take out Led Zeppelin, my favorite music artist is Matt Nathanson. Okay. Okay. So but Matt Nathanson isn't my favorite. But if you take the goat out, yeah. Like the someone that's never choice, gonna like, be never gonna touch it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we take out Haunted Mansion, it's never gonna get touched. Um it's Rise of the Resistance and then Splash Mountain. Dang. So I love Splash Mountain. Yeah. I don't do it enough because I don't like walking around wet. But that I'm attraction the same boat. that Literally attraction the same for boat. me is an American treasure. I, I, yeah. I love that attraction. I think it embodies Disney attractions. Uh, yeah, it has 100%. everything. It's got a thrill. It's got dark rides. It's got the the music. The songs mm-hmm. are iconic. Like the what animatronics. happens? The animatronics. What it's happens to Zippy Duda? Is it? Do we never hear it again? Is it gone? You'll hear it. It'll be in the music loop. You'll but hear it in not in the ride anymore. I, I know, man. That's think about that. That became like we talked about this too on the on my show. And if you heard that episode, it's not out yet. But if you heard that. Uh, and you're listening to this for a first time, you're going to hear a lot of overlap because it's just the same opinion that I have. Yeah. And this that is the first time like the, I talked to you about it. Yeah. Actually, we texted we, 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 a little bit. But we like, were waiting. This is, yeah. We were waiting to talk about it here. Yeah. Um, it, it almost like became the Disney Park anthem. Yeah, it is. From a mo- but that's the thing too. The the ride the the the, move, the ride comes from a racist ass movie. Yeah, we haven't even got to that part. Yeah, I agree. I totally Definitely. agree with getting rid of that. Yeah. There's because not a question there. It shouldn't be a question. Here's the thing. I don't think it's... I don't think it, we should get rid of it because it's racist necessarily. It's just a really shitty movie. Yeah. And here's the thing too. Splash Mountain has went out of its way to probably should, I shouldn't say because not because race. It's racist and fucked up and horrible. There's a character in the movie named Tar Baby, okay? Have you ever seen, I forgot about Tar have Baby. Have you ever seen Splash oh. Mountain? Or, or Song, of the, Song of the South? Just never one like one sitting like bits and it's pieces on YouTube. Tar horror, Baby is it's, it's bad. Yeah, they, yeah, Ta- that's funny because Tar people, Baby. People are like, Uncle Remus is the problem. He, no, he's not f- great, but those it's people, Tar Baby. Those people are the ones who have never seen the fucking movie. Yeah, if you actually watch the movie, you'd I see that that's not Tar even Tar Baby. But it's not I even don't know the most, how. It's not even the closest. No, Uncle Remus thing. isn't really the problem. No, it's Tar Baby. And they they oh. went. I think they went out of their way to not make anything in that attraction racist. There's not a yeah, single not thing a in thing. there that's even slightly offensive. No. That being said. It is based on a film that you can no longer see. Yeah, for I good think, reason. For good reason. Yeah. I well, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's good to to sugarcoat history. I want to watch the movie to a like, point. Yeah. I, to a point. Like I don't I, like. This is the argument that always comes up with this. Like it. Here's the thing about opinions, guys. They're nuanced. You can have certain layers. Like yeah. I don't think 
we should don't whitewash deal in history. Absolutes. Yes, like, I, I don't think we should whitewash. Oh, not, I don't whitewash, but get rid of our history. No. That being said, I don't want a Nazi flag flying in Germany because it's historic. I don't want a Confederate flag flying over Tampa Bay. That big because, ass one no, in Tampa. I fucking hate it. That, that thing that, is massive. I think they took it down because I didn't see it last time I drove. Thank and God. I usually notice. I've it. driven past it forty times. I hate it. The only problem with that is though that flag being there is that it is a Confederate museum. Oh, okay. See, I did not so, know that. So, so it makes sense that it's there. I found that yes. out too from somebody on Twitter. Maybe when not I be so it. giant though. Correct. <laughs> but it is an attraction. It's supposed to get you interested in like why is there a big Tampa a big thing over Tampa? It's That's the, a good it's point. A museum. Fine. But th- we're not talking about history in the grand sense of the world. We're talking about a theme park attraction. Yeah. So is it appropriate for Disney to take out this attraction that has roots in racist, horrific racist shit? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I'm conflicted because I go, we shouldn't whitewash history, but yeah. this is not, this isn't getting rid of history. This is just retheming a fucking theme park attraction. Yeah. So and, <laughs> and when I say, it's different. When I say like, I'm sad <laughs> that we're losing history, because that's like my biggest thing about losing this ride. I don't mean like that history. I mean, it's sad like we're losing that part of Disney theme park yeah, attraction. I agree history. with you. Like, yeah, I don't mean like world history. No, no, no. I, I'm just making it clear yeah, that, I know that, you, yeah, yeah. that it's two different things. Bringing yeah. down a Nazi flag yeah. in the in Germany mm-hmm. versus getting rid of a ride at a Disney theme park. Yeah. They're two very different <laughs> yeah. levels of importance. And the fact that they brought Tony Baxter back is great because Tony Baxter is maybe my second or third favorite. He's, he's up there. He's my number one. And every time he's I ride goat. Splash Mountain, I think of him and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like, thanks Tony Baxter for like just the finale itself is great. Like the build up to the finale is great. <sighs> so it's it's put, almost a perfect attraction. Yeah, and that's why I said like it embodies a Disney attraction. Mm-hmm. It has everything. It's got a thrill. It's got a dark ride. It's got animatronics. It's got music, story. It's got it's got everything. Now on the flip side of this, yeah, the flip side is a good movie doesn't equate to a good ride. No, Frozen ride, not so good. Great, great movie. I think Frozen is one of the better Disney movies they've done in a long time. Yeah. Uh, it got played to death. I think that's why people were annoyed by it. But I'm telling yeah. you, if that movie wasn't a hit, people would be like, that's a gr- that's one of the most underrated Disney films of all time. It's just that yeah. it blew up in everyone's face and yeah. they, and they weren't expecting it to. Yeah. And Nobody it just was. took off, mm-hmm. you know. Still to this day, highest grossing animated film of all time. Yeah. <laughs> so it just, it was a phenomenon. Yeah. Um, Princess and the Frog, though, is a great movie. It's got great characters, got great villain, got great music. It's got everything. They can, and I was thinking about this, they can really easily retheme this ride to be like a bayou. Yeah, it'll be perfect. It concludes on a giant paddle wheeler, yeah. you know, so that's perfect. Um, I just really hope they don't just cheaply throw some shit up and call it a day. With the names involved, I don't think they will. I don't think so either, but Especially we're also talking about doing construction during COVID. True, but it's. I feel like this is a perfect storm in a good way for that because what attraction it's taking over plus the IP that they're using. Like if you mess that IP up, you're going to get even more hate than you already had. That they have to knock this out of the park. Yeah. This has to be a ride where you go like, wow. Yeah. I, I don't I think, think it's it going to be better than splash mountain because they're just, they're, I, I, there's something and we all know this, but there's just something about nostalgia that just, you can't overcome it. Yeah. And, and, and that's really why Hannah mansion and if, if freaking rise of resistance didn't become a new number one over the Hannah mansion, nothing's going to. Yeah. There's no way. Um, I don't know. Maybe a once upon a time in Hollywood ride. Maybe. 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 I can be Cliff Booth. And <laughs> nice. And that's funny though, because with me, Splash, even though I've like acknowledged how great it is, it's never been in my like top ten. Splash Mountain? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's something that I'm like, eh, we can do it later. It's like, yeah, I don't oh, care. But third now third. that and right after that Space Mountain. Now that this news is a thing, I've said it on Twitter, I've said it to Erica and I'm telling how much you, you liked it. I'm gonna do it every time we go now. Yep, me too. I'm doing it next week, I'm doing it the following week, I'm doing it every time I go. I'm borrowing a 360 video camera. I'm going to film it in 360. Nice. nice. <sighs> yeah. So I'll always have it in a way. I'm not, I'm sad, but I'm, I'm... I'm sad, but the, the new attraction is going to be awesome. It's going to be great. The term I've been using is reluctantly optimistic. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and it's weird, too, because, like, Pirates is my second favorite attraction. And all the changes they've made to that over the years, I'm like, yes, do it. Please do it. That's good. That's fine. So, like, those changes in my second favorite attraction, I was all for. And now these changes in my, like... 10th favorite attraction worries me. So like it's it's a weird thing. Yeah. Well, it's just cuz it's a complete retheme. Yeah. Would you be on board for Pirates if they redid it to the new version that you get at Shanghai that's yes. based as more on the Yes. As long as it's not Disneyland's. Yes. Yeah. Cuz the one here was an afterthought anyway. Yeah. It wasn't even supposed to be a thing. <laughs> we should have got Mark Davis's Western River <sighs> Expedition. I know. 
That would have been crazy. That'd have been sick. But yeah, man. Um, this is the biggest theme park news in a long time. This yeah. to me trumped everything that happened over at D twenty three. Like this is the biggest it is. news. Yeah. Um, it's 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 sad, but it's gonna be fine as long as they really do this. And they to will. The best they Carter's can. gonna kill it. Tony Baxter's gonna kill it. Like it's gonna be awesome. I hope so. I want I want animatronics, but I don't want the glowy face animatronics. I want the animatronics like, like they use for Bell. Same. Because I want Which this to feel realistic. Yeah, we better get that. Um, now, my last what, question. What, what's on the, it. Oh, go ahead. My last question is: What happens to the FSU Gopher? If you guys don't know what that is, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> surprised because hardly anyone knows about it except us nerds. But it's and you have to be sitting in the front to really hear it. Yeah, because the timing of it. Yeah, he pops out of the ceiling towards the end of the ride. It's when they're in the ha- the laughing place. The laughing place. A little gopher pops out of the ceiling and says, "Go FSU!" And like mm-hmm. that's just it. And that's because the, the the guy who made that made that animatronic animatronic went to, went to, went to, to Florida State. <laughs> so what happens to him? That's my question. My last question. <sighs> I want a lot of Easter eggs yeah. for this ride. There has to be. Ah, just man, I don't know. The more I talk about it, the, the more sad I get. I know, and I haven't talked about it for like a week <laughs> since the day it happened. <laughs> See, the day it happened, uh, it I, I won't say ruin my day because like, what's going on in the world versus a theme park ride? So I won't say ruin my day. You can say ruin your day. It's still uh, I don't know. It's in all, the grand scheme also, of things, who gives it? Yeah, but, but in the grand scheme of things, we shouldn't be doing this podcast anyway because there's people true. who are starving in Africa. So that's like, true. that's it's all true. it's all you can compartmentalize it, yeah. and extrapolate so however you want. After the day of the news. That day sucked, but I haven't thought about it since then. So now, yeah, talking about it again, I'm like, ah, oh, bummed. But what do you think about the yeah. whole thing of now they're trying to get not they're trying to get rid of, but they're saying get rid of the hanging body in the mansion? I've seen that. That's ridiculous to me. <laughs> like you, if you do, I'm out. I'm moving to Alaska. Like I'm out. <laughs> like you can't do that. That's doesn't make any sense. It's no. a it's an attraction about dead people. Well, I keep like, seeing people being like, well, what if? I had this, again had the same discussion on my other on my other podcast. But what what if you're, you know, going to Disney Disney World for the first time or Disneyland, and you're you're trying to get rid of of over, you know, your your loved one committed suicide, and you're just trying not to don't think about it and think about mansion. it. Well, no, hang on. You can make that argument for anything you want. Yeah. My argument was, what if you're watching the fireworks and you see Tinkerbell fly down on the zip line. And you remember the fact that your cousin fell off a zip line and died. Should we take that out now? Because yeah. you're offended by that. Yeah. What if you're a soldier and you're walking in front of the castle, not expecting fireworks and you have PTSD during the daytime and they go off. Should we get rid of those? That one makes more sense to me. Cause it's a, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, cause that's an actual like that's medical a thing. thing. It's a medical like, thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they should. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just no. saying, uh, what if, Where, what if, what if you're at Disney and you're running on Splash Mountain, and you're on the water ride, and then you remember that your your nephew drowned in a pool two years ago. Like you can, it, at a certain point, it's gonna sound so fucking harsh, and I don't mean it to be, but at a certain point, it's your problem. Yeah, I hate to be shitty about it, yeah. but at a certain point, it's There's your a problem line for everything. It's your problem. I'm sorry. I have I have a I have a story that I edited out of my. I'm gonna edit out my last podcast. Cause I don't want to talk about it, but get over it. Get yeah. over it. I mean, yeah. it, it's it sucks to say, but you're an adult. You got to figure it out for yourself. We can't nerf the world. Yeah, uh, we do a pretty and damn good job of that already. And, and, and the I re-theme think isn't nerfing the world, but you're saying the pe- the way people are taking extreme. Oh no 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 no! no. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. saying I'm saying no no. I'm not saying yeah. that no no no. I'm not you're saying not, Prince of the Frog all. is is nerfing no, no, no. the world. I'm just, yeah, you're not. No no no, not at all, not at all. Um, but I'm saying like if you were to nitpick every little, th- I mean, exactly. Come on. Do they close the contemporary down because people commit suicide off the top of the contemporary five times a year? No, it's. Was this your dad? I guess like anything can happen. I guess like I could get in a car wreck. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like it was pretty neat. It's catastrophizing everything. Yeah. 
I don't know. But Splash Mountain is going to be fun once it gets rethemed. Plus, I do like the fact that it's going to reopen a Splash Mountain and we get to do it again. I thought I thought they were just going to be like, it's not reopening. <laughs> I really thought that. I was like, no. On July 11th, it's closed. So when are you going back to the park for the first time? You saw that there's no virtual queue for Rise of the Resistance, right? <laughs> I'm so excited. So excited. I think they're going to move away. This is my bold prediction. I think they're getting rid of my Magic Plus. And I think the Magic Bands are not going to be anything after another year or two. Well, the, well, I'll have them, and if I decide to sell them, I'll sell them. Yeah. If I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to. If I, if I don't, th- there was there would be ones that I would keep, but there would be yeah. some that I'd be okay to part with yeah. for a price. Yeah. But there's a, like thirty or so that I would be like, nope, they're not going anywhere. My Club Thirty Three yeah. one's not going anywhere. Yeah. I have the whole set. That was the one, that My cast member one from Galaxy's Edge yeah. that you have now too. Yeah. Somebody stole my yellow kyber crystal. I think you did. <laughs> I gotta find it. I gotta find it somewhere. Me too. I have the pops. I bought the pops. Yes, I think we did. I don't know where they are. <laughs> I have a Splash Mountain T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that they sold out on all the stuff on Shop Disney. People love it, man. I have a, I have a Br'er Rabbit somewhere that I bought not so long ago. Yeah, get all of it, dude. If you're making money now, you'll be good to go. It's going to be balling out of control. Close. You're doing that's you're doing good. You're doing good. I'm proud of you. Thanks. Now don't get robbed. Um, all right, friends. Have a safe Fourth of July. Thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time. May the force be with you.